Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Volpe here, uh, introducing you to the second half of the course, our 1102 half. This begins the composition and literature half of the course, so we are, uh, I don't want to say officially, but darn near close to being officially uh, at the halfway point of the term, um, more or less. Uh, so I count this as week 9 slash week 1 of 1102, uh, and forgive the silly hat, uh, my, my hair's not cooperating with me this morning, so I can't look like a, uh, a a complete clown. I guess I already do uh, with this hat and this uh, ridiculous 80s jacket, but it's just the getup that I had walking the dog and doing my work, so I wanted to get this off to you guys uh, before I proceed with my day. Uh, so I'll go ahead and continue. Um, basically, the uh, point of this video, just like the point of the first video for 1101, is just really to introduce you guys and welcome you to uh, the course. So, same procedure. You're going to get a weekly video each week. Uh, the blogs are also back. I have a new blog up for you guys now in the 1102 course shell in Blackboard. Uh, and the blog is asking you to tell me and your fellow students, um, why do we read stories? Uh, stories, poetry, drama, works of fiction. What's the point of reading them? Is it just to entertain ourselves or are we reading these things uh, maybe for some deeper, more profound purpose, maybe for uh, self-enrichment, to help ourselves understand the world we live in and the people we interact with, perhaps. Uh, so, and again, blogs will function the same way as blogs functioned in 1102. You are going to be awarded bonus points. That is how I am going to levy those uh, that bonus using the blogs, as I've said uh, several times now through several videos. In fact, uh, what I'm going to do is... It's going to be very simple. Each time you contributed a legitimate blog post uh, in 1101, I'm just going to count how many times you've contributed. If you've contributed five times, ten times, and then I'm going to assign a point total based on how many times you've contributed, and then I'm going to assign those points onto your weakest uh, essay assignment. Uh, or potentially assignments. So let's say your blogs have awarded you 10 points. Uh, what I'm likely to do is give you 10 points on either one essay, or I'll split it and have five on one essay and five on another. Um, I have to look at everyone's total number of blogs to see how this is going to work in a sensible mathematical way that isn't to um, loosey-goosey, so I want to have some standards uh, with how I apply the blog. So those of you who have contributed to blogs uh, in 1101, rest assured that you're going to get bonus points, extra credit added to uh, the weakest uh, attempt uh, you've had on an essay. Uh, speaking of 1101, just to wrap things up, I have your final essay to grade, the research version of, version of the argument persuasion argumentative persuasion essay, excuse me. Uh, that'll be back to you within two weeks' time. Uh, and I also have the discussion board to grade that you guys had done uh, at the end of last week. Uh, so I just finished your first versions of your argumentative persuasive essays, uh, the ones with that, which were supposed to have no research uh, other than uh, your uh, observations, intuitions, um, your logical deductions and inductions, uh, points of ethos, ethics, pathos, uh, emotion. Uh, a little bit on that, though. Some of you guys went whole hog with the emotion, um, which, you know, I've said it before, emotionality, using emotion, is a really profound way to try to get someone to adopt your position on something, but it's incomplete. You can't just win the day uh, with emotionalism. Um, so, uh, and that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's an objective fact. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not willing to cede any ground on that. Uh, if you just have emotion, like, um, uh, you know, a, an emotional argument is something like, um, uh, me getting into an argument with uh, my wife or my loved one, my family member, a relatively minor argument. Let's see. Let's say she made me or my, I'm living with someone else, whoever in this hypothetical situation, makes me do the dishes one night or all but insists that I do the dishes one night. When I get home, I've had a long day. 
I go ahead and do the dishes, okay? But then as I'm doing the dishes, I start uh, getting really angry and I start taking out the frustrations of my day on my wife, family member. Uh, well, that's just me showing uh, an over an overblown, passionate side of myself that needn't come out in that moment. Uh, sure, I've been frustrated throughout the day, um, but being a civilized, mature person, I should maybe take a few deep breaths, kind of quell all of that uh, rage within myself, go about doing the dishes, go to sleep, sleep on it, wake up, and greet the new day. A reasonable way of going about that, a logical way, would be if I wanted to make an argument. Let's say I had been doing the dishes each and every day up to that point, and at this point, it's it's logical to assume that multiple people in a household will contribute equally to the household chores. So if I wanted to make a logical, reasonable argument to this hypothetical person X, I could say, hey, I've been doing the dishes every day for the last five days. It would be fair, ethos, and reasonable, logos, for you, person X, to maybe take the duties of doing the dishes for the next three to five days. It's only sensible as I contributed five days worth. Now it's reasonable for you to contribute the other half of that for some parity and equality. Now you contribute another three to five days of washing the dishes. Please and thank you, okay? So that is a logical, reasonable way I could go about that. I used evidence from the past. Uh, you, person X, did uh, asked me to do the dishes. I did. Now, this isn't just a logical argument. I realize that. It's also an argument based on ethos. So I'm using two appeals there. Uh, one, logic. The other, ethos. Logos, ethos. So based on fairness and values, ethos, but also based on um, what you might refer to as common sense, okay? And I would put that under the heading of logos, okay? Um, a lot of you guys, well, not a lot of you, some of you came back to me and said, well, well, wait a minute, you said no research, how the heck am I supposed to give you evidence if I don't have any research? Well, you guys give evidence to arguments that you make with people all the time without having to go to a source, um, all the time. Just think about the different times in your day-to-day -day interactions that you are making arguments with people based on a basis of logic. And if you need to remind yourself what logic means, uh, I recommend that you look it up. Um, uh, logic isn't just merely data, facts, graphs, statistics. Of course, that is really good empirical concrete evidence, and I'm going to see that in this final uh, 1101 essay. But you could have given me appeals uh, to logic, uh, to reason, to rationality, without having had to go to an external resource. Otherwise, I would not have assigned it as something for you to do. Um, so let me just make that uh, abundantly clear, everybody. And I know when you're when you're younger, when you're in your late teens, early twenties, I'm guessing you guys are mostly seventeen years old. Uh, it's all about emotion, 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 emotion. Uh, I'm I'm thirty three. I'm still I get emotional all the time. We're human beings, of course. We can't help but be emotional. Uh, but you don't want to just let your your emotional vicissitudes uh, sway you this way and that way. If we ran society just based on emotion, we'd be, pardon my language, monkeys throwing our poop at each other uh, all the time. Uh, society can't run on just rage and passion and 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 uh, you know the result of us getting worked up over something. Okay, uh, so. Beware of pathos. Beware of overusing pathos. And if you did that on your essay, I told you, hey, this isn't going to fly. Like, I, you're, not, you're not convincing me, okay? Now, if you had ethos and logos counterbalancing that pathos, maybe so. But uh, anyway, I don't think I need to belabor the point anymore. Um, let's switch over strictly to 1102 now. So we've closed the book on 1102 or 1101. 1102, the first thing we're going to start reading, and that's in our uh, Backpack for Literature textbook. Um, that is going to be uh, works by Chuang Tzu, uh, Aesop, 
and the Grimm's brothers. They're little excerpts. Uh, you could look at the uh, announcement. I have the assignment particulars there. Uh, other than those three little excerpts right there, uh, you're going to read uh, John Updike's A and P. Uh, so the three excerpts uh, in the fable folklore section uh, these are things that hit on kind of like the cornerstone foundational aspects of storytelling and fiction. Uh, aspects about tradition, morality, uh, values, right and wrong, um, all of these things that we find in early stories. And the Grimm's brothers, remember, are kind of responsible for repurposing uh, older uh, sort of uh, stories from uh, Europe and other places. The Grimm brothers... Brothers Grimm were uh, Germanic, uh, so they are kind of repackaging and, and sort of repurposing stories from uh, an earlier tradition. Uh, some of our Disney movies uh, come from the Brothers Grimm and other sources. Uh, and then from the Brothers Grimm, they use precedent sources that go back hundreds of years before. Just like Shakespeare. We're going to read Shakespeare uh, later in the term, guys. Shakespeare is uh, also repackaging stories. He's using information that other dramatists uh, used uh, from ancient Greece, ancient Rome, medieval times. Um, so it's interesting to see how these stories get retold and reinterpreted uh, throughout the generations. Uh, and then uh, John Updike's A&P is pretty relatable, I think. It's about a kid who works in a grocery store and he tries to impress uh, these three girls, and he kind of goes out of the way to make a big show about himself, how virtuous he is, he's going to stand up to the man, his boss, and we'll see how that plays out and how that works for him, uh, for Sammy and uh, A&P. Uh, so go ahead, you have a discussion board on the three excerpts, the Changzu, Aesop, and Brothers Grimm. Uh, that's a discussion board, and then you have a uh, homework submission with the questions uh, that come at the end of the A and P story in uh, the backpack literature textbook, and the textbook uh, information is in our syllabus. Uh, we have a new syllabus for 1102, so go ahead and check in Blackboard the syllabus information. Uh, if you guys don't have the textbook, uh, go ahead and get it as soon as you can. If you don't have the textbook, you could probably find some of these things online since a lot of these stories are public domain and uh, are very well known and well circulated. Um, but it is, uh, I, I don't wait. Uh, certainly go get the textbook uh, as soon as you can. Go run over to the bookstore uh, today if, if you haven't already. Uh, so it is backpack literature. That is our textbook. So guys, uh, I am wishing you a great week one. Um, it's been my experience uh, that students tend to, I, don't, I hesitate to say, perform better in 1102. Uh, the homework is worth a little bit more uh, in 1102. So you, your weekly participation and doing, doing a good thorough job, uh, answering the questions, being clear and precise in your writing, all that's going to count more this time. Uh, you do have some essays. You have a, a short essay on Young Goodman Brown by Nathaniel Hawthorne and one uh, on Ode to a Grecian Urn by John Keats, a poem. Uh, so you do have those essays uh, and, of course, the final paper on Othello, the Shakespeare play at the end. So we have a lot of stuff, uh, a lot. It's going to be a lot of reading, analyzing, writing, but the payoff is, dare I say, it is fun. It's going to be fun, guys. Um, full disclosure, I, I like the 1102 half uh, quite a lot. Uh, so um, maybe there'll be more of a pep in my step. Who knows? Uh, so, guys, let's get in there and do a heck of a job. Uh, wishing you all a great week one to 1102. If you have any questions, if you need help, as always, email me. I'll do the best that I can. Email Miss Evans, uh, the Batman and Robin that we are. Uh, we are going to steer you folks in, in, in the correct direction. Um, and um, signing off, guys. Have a lovely week. Ta-ta.